Well, here we are, another Saturday, and we're back on the BN1. Um, over the week, I've done a few little odds and ends here and there. Um, one thing I will refer to, the, the insulation that I had talked about in my previous video, I originally made some up out of MDF and painted it and uh, put it on there. And, you know, a couple days later, I couldn't stop thinking about it. Uh, worrying about it, you know, smoking on a hot day going down the road or something like that. Being a pressed wood product, I thought, I don't trust it in the long run for this insulation. So I decided to pull it all out of there and I went back to the set that I had purchased originally. And because this is an early BN1, I don't actually need to use all the pieces that the set came with. And actually it came with a big rectangle piece for going under the driver's side floor that early BN1s don't have. So what I did was sacrifice that big rectangle piece and I was able to cut out the other two pieces I needed to remake. And uh, so this is actual, the it's like a concrete board. And I painted it with that same barbecue paint, but you see it's got a really nice texture and no way this is gonna smoke or flame up or anything like that because it's concrete board. So feeling a lot better about that. And uh, I've got the rest of the brake lines all in. And of course the wiring harness is all in and that went really well last weekend. Um, still waiting on those single sleeve connectors to finish things off. I installed the heater as you can see there and if you refer back to previous episodes in my blog, I rebuilt that heater a year or so ago and it's all correct with the crackle finish. I've got new uh, the uh, demister vent hoses. Uh, those are from SC Parts. And yeah, she looks really good. She's got the little Smiths logo there. And uh, that went in really easily. And. Uh, yeah, should be good. Uh, meanwhile, I've I finished putting in the leaf springs here. Uh, you remember I, I put in those bushings and now I've just fit the new leaf springs, which again, these are, are ones that I purchased, but I rebuilt them with new spring clips that are the correct earlier style and put in a new taller toe bolt, uh, toe pin that uh, Michael Salter made up for me that's tall enough to clear those spacers as it should and still engage with the axle. And uh, yeah, assembled those all with some anti-seize, the silver grade stuff on all the pins so that everything's well protected and lubricated. And uh, there's the front one. Yeah, so the axle is ready to go in and Right here behind me, there's the axle all ready to go. So that should be an easy install. I'll have to get some help to help lift, lift it in there. Um, coming around here, nothing really new here. Fuel tank, uh, fuel gauge sender unit uh, just set in place. I've got to get some new screws for it for mounting. Uh, fuel pump is sitting there ready to go in after the axle's in. Oh, I made up. I'm waiting for some more battery cable to come in, but I had purchased a length of this woven battery cable. And uh, I also purchased a bunch of these Lucas helmet ends and uh, made up the under chassis cable. Here, I'll show you. You can see here's the ends as they come and just like a brass casting and so I was able to you know bear the wires and pop it in there and solder it together and uh, and then afterwards I painted I masked off the, the bottom and the inside of course and then just painted the outside in a silver color to simulate the lead that these originally were made of. So here you can see the uh, battery cable that I've made. I soldered it up and then uh, where the join was, I did it first with electrical tape around the actual wire and then built it up with some uh, cloth tape to finish the joint, which is what the factory did as well. So those are ready to go and look very convincing. So on top of getting those 
the battery cable made, I've also just pre-installed the battery trays with the hold down hardware. And you can see I, with both of them, I've bashed in this, the side so that it'll clear the lines, which is what the factory did. Just went at it with a hammer, I guess, and uh, made a little clearance spot. So those are both ready to go and the batteries fit beautifully. You can see here, there's the heater. I've got, I, again, I've still got to get a few more of those uh, single sleeve connectors for hooking up the wires in the back. But uh, she's looking really good there. And today's project, I'm going to be installing the front suspension. So you can see I'd already pre-assembled the uh, kingpins and A-arms and so I've just cleaned out the paint from here so that the uh, pins can slide through nice and easily. So, and of course I gotta pre-install the bushings here and the other one I'll, I'll offer this up and then pop the other one through the larger hole that's up here and uh, reassemble those again using some of that anti-seize for the pins and bolts. So here you can see I've got, I've used just a floor jack to help hold the whole thing because I'm here doing this on my own. And uh, yeah, it went pretty well. Um, of course I used some anti-seize on, uh, on the pins themselves and offered it up like, you, like I showed you before, put the, uh, the inner bushings in once it was already in place because there's a large hole there and then put the uh, plates and nuts and just screwed them down. Um, I again employed a, uh, just a C-clamp for putting the first bushings in, um, just help get them all the way home. And I did have to remove this lower plate and loosen off the uh, fulcrum pin here just so that these had a little bit of play to, to line them up okay. Okay, so as you can see I've got the, the suspension unit jacked up. And I've put in just the outside bushing. And so now I'm going to put in the inside bushing through the big hole here. And you can just feed it through, get it started there. Okay. And then I can put the pin through. As you can see, I've already put some uh, anti seize on it. Feed her through there. Make sure it goes all the way through and we get her lined up. Good. Okay, and then on the back side, you've got the female part. Again, making sure that it lines up. And of course, you got the bushing to compress, so just get it started with the nut and use the nut to bring it home. And here you can see I'm just tightening in these last bolts on the inside. Just use a rag to protect that brake, brake line from my wrench so I don't make any dents or marks on it. It's always a key factor when you're reassembling car, a car is to always be careful of where your tools are and is it going to mark something. Just use lots of rags to help protect the paintwork. So as you can see here, uh, just getting ready to fit the front shock. And of course, with fresh paint, you've always got to re-tap all the holes for the shock bolts. So that's what I'm doing right now. And coming along really nicely. All right, so there we go. We got the front or the top trunnions all done. It was a hell of a job getting it in there. Um, so of course, for once you start actually hooking up the uh, kingpin uh, to the arms and shocks, you've got to set everything in a preloaded position so that the, all the bushings are kind of set in that position. There's no 
unnecessary load on them. Um, so what they do, what it says in the manual, is you just put a little, a two inch spacer block underneath the arms of the shock. And if you just have everything sitting at that level, that's about what basic ride height is when the weight of the car is down. Um, so all of these bushings in the A arms are, I leave them slack for now. Um, I can tighten them up once the, leaf, once the uh, coil springs are in or when the car is down on the ground. But until it's in a weighted position, they're just run on finger tight. And uh, same thing with these. So probably the trickiest part of this assembly process was getting this upper uh, trunnion uh, fulcrum pin in. Um, the hard part being these shock arms, you have to loosen off this bolt uh, and then get something in there and spread those shock arms. I actually employed those eighth inch washers that I've been using so much. I put a eighth inch washer and another thin flat washer in there to keep that spread open and that was the only way and then I had to clamp these bushings down as much as I could to try and fit them in there. It took a couple whacks with a hammer but once it's in and then you can use a uh, like a punch or tapered dowel to uh, make sure the holes all lined up all the way through and then drive the pin in. And again, like I say, I, this is just kind of run on finger tight. Once we get the coil springs in, which I've got the lower spring pans off right now, but what I'm going to do next week is use some uh, long, you know, 10 inch uh, long uh, threaded rods with nuts to, I'll put the coil spring in with the pan under it and use these rods to, and nuts to draw it up into here and then one by one I can just change out the rod, the threaded rods for the proper bolts. And that's how you get the springs in. But that'll be for next week once I get the threaded rods in. So yeah, there is the front suspension. And uh, it's looking really good. Of course you got the, everything's uh, done in the uh, black oxide on Healy suspension here. Um, so all the hardware is correct and she's looking really good. So there we have it, a uh, full day's work. Feeling really good about that. Got both front suspensions uh, basically added to the car, less the uh, coil springs, which I'll do next week. Um, but uh, yeah, it's looking really good. Um, so that's it for this week's blog post. Until next week, we can finish off the front suspension and hopefully put in the rear axle. Until then, I'm Jeff Chrysler, a detail enthusiast. Until next time.